Good evening. It is with great joy that I have this opportunity to speak with you all from Fenwick High School. We feel blessed to have this opportunity to meet with you and to speak with you tonight during this pandemic. My name is Joe Ori, and I am the Director of Admissions here at Fenwick High School. Tonight, I have asked members of our faculty to speak about the Fenwick approach to STEM. We are all here tonight to share our perspective on Fenwick. We recognize that making a high school decision has become more and more difficult over the past decade. And we hope to offer an honest and straightforward approach tonight to help and aid your decision. Fenwick is a premier college preparatory high school guided by Dominican Catholic values. We give Chicago area students a superior academic choice and empower them to grow intellectually, spiritually, and emotionally in a proven environment. We are proud of our students and their achievements. Our world-class STEM program not only prepares students for the complex world, it's a piece of the puzzle that develops them into thoughtful problem solvers and faithful leaders. At this time, I'd like to introduce the assistant principal here at Fenwick High School to start off our academic presentation. Ms. Eleanor Kane, assistant principal, thank you. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. My name is Eleanor Kane. I have the privilege of being here tonight, not only as the assistant principal, but also as a member of the math department. When freshman friars walk through our doors of 505 Washington Boulevard, they immediately dive right in. Fenwick provides them with a challenging curriculum right out of the gate that includes options for both honors and AP courses allows them to choose an a language to immerse themselves in for four years and pick from electives that spark their creativity. Our teachers are standouts in many ways, but truly excel in their care for their students and their passion for their subject matter. Nowhere is this better highlighted than in our AP program. We offer 24 AP courses across our departments. While these courses allow students to enter college ahead of the game with college credit, they are crucial for allowing our students to reach their full academic potential. These teachers in the classes are not just preparing them for the exam. They are preparing them for college by teaching them at that high level. Time and time again, our students rise to this challenge. One of the reasons our faculty has such a large impact on our students is that they lead by example and are committed to lifetime of learning. We as administrators value the diversity of their backgrounds. Over 80% of our teachers have master's degrees in either education or their subject matters. Many have worked outside of education in their respective fields. And currently we have five engineers and a pediatrician on our faculty. These unique experiences help our faculty to prepare their students for the world beyond Fenwick's walls. Our STEM curriculum is designed to do the same. Our lab sciences typically meet for seven periods a week, which is an hour and a half longer per week than other courses. This gives teachers time to focus on hands-on collaborative experiences and data collection. While our students are not in person as often this year, the lab experience has still been a high priority for all of our science teachers. Our extensive math curriculum offers courses beyond AP calculus. Lastly, after discovering that 25% of our alumni are going into STEM related careers, our computer science department was expanded in collaboration with the University of Illinois. Our physical space is also changing. In the last two years, we designed a new engineering lab and are in the works to start developing a new robotics lab. At this time, I would like to turn it over to the leaders of our STEM departments. The first being Roger Fennell, our math department chair. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Roger Fennell. I'm the math department chairperson. I'm also a Fenwick alumnus, as are three other members of our 11 uh, member uh, math department. Uh, I'm going to be referring to a syllabus flowchart here tonight. Obviously, you can't read it very well from where you are, but I will be willing to uh, send you a copy or you can find it 
uh, under the math website, on the math website within the Fenwick website. The uh, levels uh, in freshman year are Algebra II Honors, Advanced Algebra in other words, and College Prep Algebra I, four sections of honors, six sections of regular. Students get into those, are placed into those two courses by the results from the entrance exam. Now the entrance exam is a nationwide exam called the STS exam. And uh, don't worry about it. If you're doing average or above average work in math right now in junior high, you should have no trouble with the math on the exam. It covers all the basic topics of uh, junior high math, decimals, fractions, percents. There are a few uh, algebra questions, but they're more in, in the line of which value of x uh, of the choice is given, what value of x would make this equation true. So if you don't know any fancy algebra rules, you can just try the numbers and see which one works. Or there might be a few geometry questions uh, involving identifying basic figures. But if you're doing average or above average uh, work in math right now, you should have no trouble handling the math on the entrance exam. Uh, in the future years, after freshman year, there are two levels of geometry, three levels in junior year, and in senior year, a, a number of uh, elective courses. Uh, we require three and a half years of math, but the vast majority of our students take all four years, and some students will find time to pick up an extra course along the way, such as AP Statistics or maybe a one-semester statistics course we offer or a one-semester finite math course that we offer. In the fourth year, we have uh, three levels of calculus. This year, we have six sections of calculus. There's the Advanced Placement BC uh, Calculus Test, our calculus course by which, at the end of the year, students can earn two semesters of college credit. The AB course, which covers about 60% of the BC material. And a new course we put in last year called Honors Applied Calculus for students who might not want to take a rigorous AP calculus class but would like to prepare for college, especially if they're going into social studies or uh, biological science, where they might need a, a not need quite as much calculus as in other branches of science. I'd like to tell you about two particular courses that we offer. We have some students coming in every year who are ahead in our honors program or where they would normally be placed in our honors program. This is due to uh, junior high classes that they take uh, especially in, uh, in the seventh or eighth grade or summer enrichment courses. I teach a fifth year course. It has 12 students in it this year. Uh, next year, it's going to be over 20 students of students who last year finished the BC calculus class and took the BC calculus exam with good results. This class is called multivariable calculus, basically three dimensional calculus. And I also teach a class with four students only in it this year called Differential Equations. Those four students finished the BC Calculus class uh, as sophomores. And so they're taking a class called Honors Differential Equations, a class I think I didn't take until I was a sophomore in college. I mentioned these two particular classes because it illustrates that at about 1,100 students, we're big enough that we will offer classes, not only in math, but in other subjects, with a very, a very few number of students involved. Uh, two years ago, I had just one uh, student in differential equations. Uh, we will offer these if you're at a certain level. Wherever you are at a certain level, we will find a class or create a class, if we don't already have one, uh, that will fit your needs. But at 1,100, we're small enough that nobody falls through the cracks here at Fenwick. Every student is carefully evaluated at the end of each semester. Uh, all the department members, my department members, give me a list of all of their semester grades, and we literally go through those grades one by one to decide the very best placement for our students for the following year. All of our courses are college prep. From day one, we tell our students we're getting you ready for college. I think we're about the only school, uh, perhaps the only school in the state, who requires all of our freshmen, sophomores, and juniors to take the PSAT National Merit Exam in October, just a, a few days ago. And uh, so in order to prepare them for college, we give them, freshmen and sophomores, we give them two chances to practice on the PSAT before junior year when they can, if they do well, qualify for National Merit Scholarships. Actually built into our math curriculum, in every class in freshman, sophomore, and junior year, 
uh, in first semester, we do some practice PSAT problems. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why our SAT and ACT scores, average score, are, are always among the very best in the state. And you have to remember at Fenwick, every junior is required to take either the ACT or SAT class or course or test rather, or both. So our, our uh, average grade on the SAT and ACT is based on a very high percent of our students taking the exam. And yet we still always finish right near the top in the state. The textbooks we use are very much up to date using modern technology in uh, especially in honors classes and also in junior, all junior and senior classes. We uh, require a graphing calculator. It's not required, but recommended that students get used to using them in uh, freshman and sophomore college prep classes as well. Uh, this is uh, the one I use is a TI 84 plus CE. If you're in the market for a calculator for Christmas, uh, as uh, freshmen, uh, honors freshmen, and then all juniors and seniors, we require the TI 84 plus or the TI 84 plus CE. So please keep that in mind for, uh, for future use in classes. Also, I'd like to tell you about our math competition club. We have a large number of students who uh, want the extra challenge and extra practice of trying different and challenging math problems. Uh, before the PSAT, we had four club contests, which were old PSAT questions, and we had uh, well over 100 students who voluntarily took a 45-minute contest with very good results. Just today, we had our first Illinois Math League contest of the year. It's a six-question, 30-minute exam that a large number of students will be taking. And we all, uh, and we always do very well in these uh, league contests. We're in three different leagues, one for freshman algebra students only. And from those uh, scores, high scores in those leagues, we choose our students to represent our school in the Archdiocese contest. We have just five students doing that. Uh, that's held every February. And more times than not, probably 75% of the time, we have won that contest over the years. We also will be just later on this week picking the best, we think the best nine or 10 students from each of the four class years to be on our state math team. Our state math team will be practicing from now until February when the state math contest will be held. Last year, uh, in the state math regionals, we are in the second highest uh, region by uh, or division by uh, school population. And last year we finished uh, third in the state in our division after regionals. Unfortunately, there were no state finals, which uh, disappointed us because we had thought we could win quite a few awards down there also. So we finished third in our region. And in fact, we were the highest scoring Catholic school in our division. Why? What, what's that you ask? Did we beat St. Ignatius and Marist and, uh, and uh, Bennett Academy? Well, as a matter of fact, we did. Thank you for asking that. Uh, also, I'd like to tell you about our junior high math contest. This is the 49th annual one that we've had. Our junior high math contest is open to all seventh and eighth graders in the area. This year, it will be virtual. We've already sent out invitations to many, many schools. Please check with your teacher if he or she has not mentioned the contest already. It will be held virtually the weekend of November 7th, and we hope to see your school represented. Also, I uh, am producing our first stage production of the year. Uh, it's a two, uh, uh, it's a, a series of a set of two one-act comedies called Murder on West Moon Street and Young Sherlock, and that uh, uh, will also be presented virtually. Uh, tickets, uh, online tickets to get a link to the event will be uh, on sale on the Fenwick website uh, early next week. And we hope you might join us to see the talent we have uh, in our Black Friars Guild for our productions involving the fall comedy, the, uh, uh, the winter Manoa show, which is our annual variety show, which has over 100 students in the cast, and then our spring musical. I, at this time, would thank you for listening, and I'd like to turn the podium over to Mr. Marcus McKinley, the chairperson of our science department. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fennell. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to our STEM presentation this evening. I'm glad that you could join us. I thank you for your interest in what Fenwick has to offer, the outstanding ed education that we provide in STEM. 
I'd like to introduce to you our faculty to start off, um, which is one of the strong points, I think, of all the departments here at Fenwick is the faculty. They are well educated, often holding advanced degrees in their subject area. They are serious, dedicated, and wanting every student that comes into their classroom to have some success. One thing I'd like to point out here before I get started is something that Mr. Fennell said. Um, we do not want students to fall through the cracks. We are very much interested in making sure that every student here at Fenwick receives the best education that they possibly can. And part of that is making sure that all of our students are properly placed into the correct subject and at the correct level. So our faculty um, has quite a range of experience from six years of teaching all the way up to 36 years of teaching. And we have new teaching methods and we have traditional teaching methods going on in our department. Our faculty, however, work well as a team, even though they have a variety of teaching methods. They're often involved in extracurricular activities. They're very interested in improving our program here at Fenwick. We write often a lot of our own labs, and I'll talk a little bit about our laboratory program, of which we're very proud. Um, they stay before and after school to help students in all subject areas and at all levels. Our faculty is in very much interested in maintaining um, what Fenwick has always been about, which is to graduate students that are curious, that are lifelong learners, that will continue on in a liberal arts education. So as I'm showing you here our, our faculty, I wanna tell you here our program involves biology, chemistry, um, anatomy and physiology and environmental science in our department. All of our teachers have been trained in their subject area, their primary subject area that they've taught in. Um, and again, I want to point out that they hold advanced degrees. That being said, we are also trained as teachers. That is our profession. That is our passion. We are very much interested in passing along knowledge to all of our students. We've had many awards for our faculty over the years, including a Golden Apple Award winner, outstanding teachers from the University of Chicago. The facilities that we have to work with are outstanding. We have nine laboratories here at Fenwick, which for a school of our size of about 1,100 students is unusual. Um, our, most of our labs are up to date with the most modern technology and computer interfaces. We have a brand new maker space, which Mr. Kleinhans will talk about. And we also have upgraded chemistry and biology labs. One of the things that we're most proud about is our seven period per week laboratory schedule. And two 90 period minute laboratories are set aside each week for hands-on activity during the regular school year. During this pandemic era, where we're in a hybrid learning environment, we still have the opportunity for a full laboratory session one day a week for all of our students. We very much uh, think our laboratory program is what sets us aside from other high schools. Our AP exam scores, as, um, as has been mentioned already, uh, compare favorably with the very top schools in the nation and are well above national averages. As you can see in AP Biology and AP Chemistry, they're 25% higher than the national averages. And AP Environmental Science also is up there. Our students start their sequence freshman year, for most of our students, with biology. We have various levels, including AP Biology for freshmen, honors, and then college preparatory um, biology. For students that opt out of taking biology during the regular school year, we have a vigorous summer school program. Um, last year, we had many students, even during the pandemic, opting to take biology in the summer. Then on the sophomore year, our students will take chemistry. We offer 
honors chemistry, college preparatory chemistry, and then a college level advanced honors chemistry class. This class is not AP, but does prepare students to take the AP exam and the AP class their senior year. We strongly encourage all students to take the major sciences, biology, chemistry, and physics. What's outstanding about Fenwick is that we have a lot of female students um, that take physics, many times greater than the national average. And we're very proud of that. Most of our students do take some level of physics. We have a summer school program during the normal um, school year, not last year because of the pandemic. We offer um, three in-house classes. Um, they meet five days a week or five hours each day. It is a full year of each of those subject areas. And then we offer a field course um, that goes to Costa Rica. That class actually starts in January with a regular in-class se session and then it ends with a 10-day field trip. This has been very popular in the past. Um, about 25 students uh, attend this field trip every year. For students that are looking for um, non-competitive, less stressful exposure to the sciences, they just want more and more sciences. We have four clubs presently um, operating here at Fenwick, the environmental club, the medical club, the robotics club, and the science club. Just as an example of how popular these are, last year, the medical club had a um, very regular attendance of 70 to 80 students at their meetings. To get into our excellence here in teaching, I guess we have to look to our students and how they perform not only on um, AP exams and their grades in our classes, but also how they compare to other schools. Um, Mr. Fennell mentioned St. Ignatius, um, one of our competitors, and I will say that the science competitions that I'm going to mention very briefly here, um, St. Ignatius is welcome to um, compete with us, but they never do. And I think the reason for that over the years has been they just don't want to get beat. Um, our major interscholastic competition um, includes uh, WISE, which is now called the Academic Challenge, and our team's competition, formerly known as JETS. Um, we have other contests that we also administer during the year that uh, rank us with other schools. In the team's competition, students work um, in groups, hence the word team, to solve some kind of a problem. There are two parts to this competition. One is involves taking a test in the morning and then another involves constructing uh, some object or device in the afternoon. Um, some of the topics that have been covered over the years include smart cars, um, global health and engineering, and biomimetrics. Our team's competition should be mentioned here um, to show our excellence in science education. This competition, which we've been participating in since the 1980s, um, we have had 14 first place finishes. No other team, no other school in the United States, no other selective school in this country has accomplished that. And we're very proud of it. And as Mr. Kleinhans will point out, um, our most recent um, feat included a first place finish statewide. Um, our WISE competition is more paper and pencil based. Students take a test in one of seven fields. We put together our teams based on their abilities in certain subject areas. And as you can see, we've had first place finishes many years in a row. This is more of a state competition, but uh, we are competing with the very best high schools in the state of Illinois. So I wanna thank you very much for allowing us to show you what Fenwick Science has to offer. Now I'm going to turn it over to, to Mr. Kleinhans, who is our CS and Physics Department Chair. Thank you, Marcus, and thank you everybody for attending. And you know, I'd like to echo some of the same sentiments that you've heard from Mr. Fennell and Mr. McKinley. Um, a lot of our success here that's centered around the student is really built on three things. And one is the people that we have. 
in physics and CS, it's a lot like the other disciplines. All of our physics teachers have engineering degrees at top five institutions, Purdue, University of Illinois, University of Wisconsin. And you may say, well, why does that matter? It matters because the faculty then understands the rigor that's gonna be required at the next level. Fenwick's a great destination, but it's also a departure point uh, for doing well at university and beyond. So having people that have been through the experience we want our students to experience is gonna be very beneficial. Um, it's also, I think, important, not only do they understand the rigor, um, many of these engineers, in fact, all but one have worked in the private sector at large organizations doing engineering work. And so that resonates with our students, particularly in the lab component. And physics, like the other lab sciences that we have here, meets for four periods a week. So a double period twice a week. And, and that's really important because not all kids are pen and paper learners. Some, some learn and some get excited and motivated by the hands-on component of science. And so it exposes our students to that area of science. And what's interesting is at one of our recent professional developments, we asked the top physics TA, the person that runs all the physics TAs at U of I to come up and do professional development for us. And the, and the rationale was how do we better prepare our own students for what they're experiencing at university? And one of the things she highlighted is universities are pushing more and more to open-ended labs. And when we asked, well, how many do you do in a semester of physics at university? Um, you know, she probably said eight, which is great, but we do eight labs in a month. So after a semester, we're at 24 hands-on labs. So there's a real opportunity for our students to get exposed in a meaningful way. Um, so that's a little bit about the labs, a little bit about the faculty. Our physics program is like our other science programs too in the curriculum we offer. We offer the full suite of physics classes. And, and that's deep in the AP College uh, Board experience area. So there's AP Physics 1, AP Physics 2, a calculus AP Physics that has two test areas. So it's really, there's four kind of AP Physics style courses that are offered by the AP College Board that universities use to kind of evaluate students in terms of strength of schedule and bolstering their transcript. And we offer all those courses. And we're very proud of our students um, we, we perform significantly better than the national average in terms of three or higher on the AP score, which would be termed a passing grade, and oftentimes four to five times higher on uh, the top scores, the fives. As an example, last year in kind of a, a COVID shortened year, our AP, two, our AP Physics 2 class had 45% of the class get a five. We take that class instead of in a year and a half year, unlike other peer institutions, the national average was 10%. So that's the kind of performance um, that exists here in the school environment. Uh, the, the other thing I want to talk about, you know, kind of segue a little bit from the physics and the science area is computer science. Uh, that's, a, that's a passion of mine. That's a, I graduated with a computer science degree from University of Illinois, worked in the private sector, uh, for over 20 years, uh, had my own software company, and the people that we work with in the computer science area at Fenwick have the same backgrounds. All engineers, some with masters in their subject area, and we have partnered to develop a really kind of provocative curriculum for our students. We decided to partner with a top consulting organization at University of Illinois. They take the top engineers, top business students, put them in a consulting organization and make them available to run management consulting projects for organizations. And they do this for Google and Amazon and Microsoft. And we encourage them to do it for us. And we said, we'd like to you know, develop a state-of-the-art computer curriculum. And so they helped us develop three of the courses that we teach that hundreds of students are enrolled in every semester here at Fenway. And one is just simply an intro to computer science course. The language is Python, it really doesn't matter. But what they steered us to is they said, one of the issues with computer science is it's almost a little too techy, too sciencey up front. So it turns kids off. So they geared us and we shifted it towards a more business oriented CS course. And so our kids get excited making apps like you have on your phone for the weather, building an ATM app. So that's, that's one of our courses, a semester course a lot of kids take. A second, which I think is probably our most unique course, 
is computer skills for business. 25% of our graduates go into STEM degrees, 25 plus percent. 35 plus percent go into business degrees. And those students, when they enter university, have to take a CS class. And then they often go on to internships using Excel extensively, macros in Excel, scripting in Excel, pivot tables. And so we developed a CS skills for business class that's targeted for that student who's interested in how's the application of computer science gonna go in the accounting, the finance, the marketing, the sales operations area. And many students have written when they've been at university, at Dayton or Notre Dame, um, at the Ross School, at the Kelly School, Ross School at Michigan, Kelly School at Indiana saying that class was the class that most prepared them for the internship opportunities they experienced in their freshman and sophomore year. And some have highlighted as what landed them jobs at Deloitte, Bain, McKenzie. So having that type of experience. So that's a second class we co-developed with this group at uh, U of I. And then our third class is a traditional AP computer science class. And they helped us kind of modify and customize that to top students. And we have three sections of that. And most high schools, two to three times our size, have one to two sections of AP computer science. So it kind of it shows the appetite of the students and also the strength of the curriculum. Um, and then finally, in the computer science area, just as in our lab sciences, we have a really hands on component where you're not only programming, but you're working with devices. And so we have a technical drafting class where we use AutoCAD, Maya and actually do construction and 3D printing of the objects we actually build. And we've constructed a new engineering and innovation lab that has a host of 3D printers. And these students come in, they design objects, gear assemblies, Christmas trees, things of interest. Um, this year's project is a gumball machine and they have to control a lever, a disbursement device for the gumball, a way to contain it. And so, you know, they're given a project, they collaborate shoulder to shoulder with the faculty and other students, and they kind of do innovative technologies. Um, and then if you're, if you're, if you like that and you say, boy, I'm really interested, then you can uh, move on to the robotics area. And we've partnered with third parties to offer robotics, 3D printing, cyber forensics, which some of our faculty teach not just here, um, but also at universities. And this year, under construction is a second innovation lab that's geared around robotics. And we anticipate many middle school programs as well as high school competition programs in that venue. So that's a little bit about computer science and physics. Um, what I'd like to wrap up with is, you know, what are the outcomes for our students? So they go through all this and they do this. Well, the, the outcomes for our students, I think, are really threefold. At here, here they're in an exciting and an innovative environment with similarly minded people. And that's, that's powerful in itself. Um, but then what comes from that is then when they go out and compete against other institutions, um, they do very well. As Mr. Com Mr. McKinley mentioned, last year we took first in state and first in the region for Illinois' largest science competition. No other Catholic school made it to state. So we're competing against top tier public sector schools, private schools like the University of Chicago lab schools, and we came in first in the state. That's that's pretty impressive opportunity for our kids. And then where do they go from here? They go to top tier universities. Um, our students go, we've had students at MIT, Michigan, U of I, all the top tier engineering schools. And then from there, they go on to get great jobs. And one of probably the biggest satisfaction in this job is not only working with the kids day to day, but when you travel around the country, uh, such as Seattle, stopping by and seeing the students who are working at Amazon or looking at on the West Coast, the kids are at Microsoft and seeing and hearing from them that this place was a foundational asset for them on their career journey. So we look forward to the opportunity to get exposed to your family and uh, your student. I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Ori. Well, thank you, Mr. Klein. And we hope that we were able to provide a clear cut picture of the Fenwick approach to STEM. Please check out our website for some other opportunities to learn more about Fenwick virtually. Worth noting, next Tuesday at 6 p.m., we will be offering the Fenwick approach to the expressive arts. 
One final note for all of our eighth graders out there, if you are interested in being a Fenwick Friar, we ask that you mark December 5th on your calendars. Fenwick's entrance exam is the first step towards your future. On behalf of the entire Fenwick community, we thank you for joining us tonight and we wish you all a pleasant evening. Thank you.